Okay, so Prime Minister. Okay, Chair, sure. what are we going to propose on this debate? First of all, uh, we would impose a ban on the National American tribe uh, territories to hold gambling. What we mean by this ban? We mean that we do not want to prohibit any gambling activities whatsoever, but we want to remove all these special rights that are actually currently in the status quo imposed for these territories, uh, remove them and uh, have those territories uh, being permitted to own casinos and other gambling places just on the same rights as every other state in the United States and uh, permit the state to control uh, the, the premises and control the uh, way that those casinos or the other gambling places will work. Uh, in the status quo, we have to clarify this, uh, this one. Uh, in the United States, of course, uh, gambling is not free is not permitted you have some huge requirements that you have to fulfill in order to own a legal gambling place and therefore that is what we mean by the ban the ban means that we want to uh, impose only those regulations that are currently in the entire united states so uh, firstly we have to clarify what are the vulnerable groups right now in the status quo and uh, in the in the alternative world that might suffer from gambling first of all we have to clarify that the people who really suffer from gambling are the people who already have the poor situation who already are desperate they are the most vulnerable group because they think that gambling is uh, their chance in order to get rich very quickly they don't really have a lot of money but they still have an incentive to try to go and gamble and therefore potentially because just the chances that you will win are very, very slim. They potentially risk everything that they have in order to get the winning of their life. Uh, also, the people who suffer from that are the families of those people who gamble because gambling is a very addictive sport. I will show you that later. We have to. Uh, we have three things that we want to mark on the... Uh, yeah, okay, clarification, CEO, quickly, please. Uh, you talked about the regulations. Could you please specify the regulations which you are going to involve on the Native American gambling? Uh, it doesn't really matter what exactly will be the regulations, like the specifics of those, those regulations. What really matters is that we do not want to give uh, the National American tribes easier way in order to hold the gambling places, but we want to have them to fulfill all those strict requirements that are currently, uh, currently uh, imposed by the whole federal government in the United States. Okay, three points we will mark. Firstly, that the Native American tribes are being stripped of their culture with the regulations as it stands correctly right now. So, uh, secondly, that even if those individuals who go to those gambling places will win, after all, the entire region of the National American tribe will lose uh, all, overall. And thirdly, what we are going to do is to protect the individuals and the family, and we will show you why the state has the principle uh, to impose that ban in the first place. Let me start me. Uh, let me start we, uh, with the last point that I just have started. Why the state has the right moral obligation in order to impose that ban? Firstly, we have to say that. Uh, Gambling is an addictive sport in which you can lose a lot of money, in, in which you can uh, even go under the debt, in which basically you risk everything just on the, on the single card, for instance, in the jackpot or just on the one break of the, of the pipe on the uh, single hand machines. And therefore, uh, there is legitimation from the state which intent as a state is to protect as many individuals as we possibly can. The obligation of the state is to protect citizens, but not only from the aggression from the outside, but also from their own uh, devil that might be sitting inside of them and which is an addiction to gambling. What we want to do is to protect the, the individuals who might gamble and their families, basically, because as I said, when you go to gamble, the chances that you win are very, very slim. For instance, when you play a game of poker, you have 
uh, hundred thousand of combinations uh, and chances that possibly uh, can lead you to lose, and therefore you are not really uh, clearly sure whether you will win or whether you will lose. And usually the people who want to gamble are just the people that don't really have a lot of experience in gambling, are people who don't really pay, uh, no thanks, no more clarifications, uh, who don't really uh, take into account the winning chances, but the people who really just want to have fun, even though if it goes at the cost of their lives. And therefore, uh, when you go and lose, it doesn't really help your situation at all because you don't have money anymore. And if you go and win, it's just an incentive for you to play and lose more. So you will lose your entire winnings and you will gamble even more and you will lose even more money. And therefore you will suffer from that because not only you don't have any money left, but also you develop a very big uh, addiction to the gambling, which, incentives, uh, which is an incentive for you to gamble even more and lose even more. And who suffers from that? Firstly, you, because you are not only addicted to gambling right now and you don't really know how to develop, uh, how to handle that addiction, but only you don't have money and also your family because they have to figure out a way how to hold you from gambling. That's the first thing. And secondly, they also will struggle because you are most likely to lose an entire money that your family have to live from that month. And basically, that's why the state has to impose that ban because if we impose that ban and if we... Uh, make a little bit smaller incentive for people just to open the, the gambling places left and right. Therefore, people will be less likely to just go to the go to the casinos or to any place when they have to travel the other way uh, across the country and they will be less likely to gamble there. But why why is it uh, harmful for the for the region? Because even if those uh, individuals who go there and gamble might win, the region will still not develop. They will be all circled around one gambling place or a few gambling places, which will be owned most likely not by the people that are a national American tribe, but from the investors from the outside, because you really need a lot of money in order to pay for the winnings. And therefore these national American tribes that are poor are not really able to develop enough money in order to raise these gambling places. Therefore, they will be only perceived, uh, per uh, perceived as a region which is only up to gambling not really doesn't have any cultural inheritance whatsoever and also they will not benefit from that because they will have no winnings whatsoever uh, my partner will tell you a little bit more why they are even more strapped of the culture thank you we are proud to propose we thank the prime minister for that speech and now give the floor to the leader of opposition to open their case panel several points of response but first one key clarification regarding what we just heard from opening government note that opening government tells us that look the model that they propose and what they want is that the same regulations that would apply to anyone else in the u.s would apply to native americans note that they show no analysis why specifically gambling in these reservations is in any way worse than the gambling outside of reservations and i would argue that Probably it is not, but also secondly, note that in multiple states in the United States, gambling is completely forbidden except for in these reservations, right? So note that if they say that it should be the same exact regulations, actually it is an all out ban. But okay, a lot of context before going into my substantive. So first of all, what is the historical context of reservations and why do reservations actually exist? Note that Native American people have been oppressed for, for hundreds of years and they were forced to go to these reservations to kind of, so they were given these reservations as kind of a token that, okay, you kind of get this little amount of land, even though people kind of took over masses and masses of land that were historically theirs, right? So they have this kind of, this is the small reparation that they have been able to achieve and this and so forth however note that what kind of land this reservation usually is often it is kind of far away so it is far away from the more desirable land the land that the settlers gave to native americans was the kind of worse land so it was worse for agriculture worse for other purposes and also it is often in the cases of states like Nevada in the middle of the desert, right? So there's not many things that you can do with this land and this land is far away. So, so another point of characterization then, what do the clients that come 
to these casinos and gambling places look like? Note that, first of all, these reservations are often far away for people, right? So they have to drive many, many miles there, often, you know, even several hours in places like Nevada, right? So what does this mean? That people who go there are going there specifically kind of for tourism purposes. For most people, it is not easily accessible to go to these reservations every day or, you know, even every weekend, right? Because it takes a lot of time to get there, but, and so forth. But note also a final thing. So basically the commercial context in which these um, casinos and so forth operate is a context where often similar gambling or even gambling at all is illegal in other places, right? That means that this is a unique source of income that is exclusive for Native Americans. So basically from this context, two points of substantive. Firstly, why this is akin to reparations for the Native American people and that they have a principal right to this money. And secondly, how these reparations massively benefit the, mass, the very disenfranchised Native American people and how this is very important. But okay, first of all, why is this akin to reparations? As I explained before, this is a source of income that in many places is solely reserved for Native Americans. And, and even in states where there are other kind of gambling establishments, Native Americans are more free to kind of have different sorts of gambling that people may be interested in, right? And why is, so why is this specifically like reparations? Well, because gambling is kind of easy money, right? To the degree that the house always wins and, and the people operating these casinos are able to have access to a lot of money. Due to the fact that this is an income source that is legally made exclusive to Native Americans, we think that this is a way for them to get financial, like get an income that to some degree is able to uh, kind of account for past harms. So while we agree that probably there could even be higher reparations, we think that it is a very positive thing that it exists in the first place, right? And we think that alternatives, so actually paying direct reparations and other things are not going to happen due to the fact that there's not political will and so forth to do so. So this is uniquely a way where they can get money for the principal harms, for the land that was stolen from them, and for the kind of harm that they have historically had to go through, right? But second point of substantive, why these reparations massively benefit the dis very disenfranchised Native American people? Note that unlike um, open government characterizes, a lot of these casinos and gambling establishments are actually run by Native Americans themselves, right? So they basically own the casino and Native, and because this is specifically on reservations, it is people who are Native Americans who live there, right? Because it is this historical land that has been given to them. So also not only the casino operators, but the people who are working within that casino, the people who are running the tables, the people who are working as waiters within the casino store, the people who are cleaning the casino, the people who are doing marketing for the casino, all of these different jobs that are associated with it are going to Native Americans, right? And, and this means that people get, so not only the casino, but people working for that casino get a source of income, which we think is massively important. But note that also this spills over to other people in the reservation, right? Because when there are people who kind of as tourists come to this reservation for this casino, there's an opportunity to have other kinds of services in the area, right? So operating restaurants in the area, operating museums in the area, or operating things that tourists are likely to go to, which will then indeed create more money and more financial wealth for these people in these reservations. Why is this specifically so important? Due to the fact that Native Americans disproportionately suffer from kind of in the status quo due to the fact that they have been historically disenfranchised. So what does this look like? It looks like them being on average less educated than the average American. And note that they also suffer significantly more from unemployment and substance abuse due to the fact that they have kind of historically had a lot of opportunities taken away from them and for historic racism and so forth. So this is uniquely a way in which they're able to find money and employment that is massively beneficial in allowing them to have fulfilling lives and kind of, kind of being able to live well and so forth. Now note, even if you buy into the characterization that from opening government that look, it's these investors that own these casinos, Note that firstly, it's that they don't prove why this is a difference from the status quo where probably in some states there are these investors who own these casinos anyway. But also note that these investors, even if these investors exist, 
Note that in order to operate the casino, they have to pay the people who are who own this land, right? They have to pay a big sum of money to these Native Americans. So even then, we think that this is a massive benefit for them due to the fact that they have this influx of money and therefore reparations that allow them to, that allow to account for these historical injustices. Therefore, vote OO. We thank the Leader of Opposition for that speech and now give the floor to the DPM to conclude the OG case. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Okay. So, oh, wait, wait, let me be in my. Have my phone. Okay. Uh, so, for the purposes of my speech, I'm gonna take the what I think is the strongest, uh, strongest framing of opening opposition. Therefore, like speaking about the cases where the gambling is uh, banned in the other parts of the state, so the unique source of income you claim exists. Can, can possibly exist because in other cases it's just not the only place where 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 those, gamb those gamblers could go, so your impact wouldn't exist anyway. And what I'm gonna show you is that even in the case uh, where where we would buy the uh, buy the uh, argument of opening opposition and believe that there that this, this will be the place where uh, where the people who want to gamble in, in, in the certain state will go in order to do so, it's still not beneficial uh, for for this region. Uh, and also, it, uh, the, it breaks some uh, some obligations of the country, which it has to, which it has to all of uh, all of its citizens. Uh, uh, let Let me start with, uh, from the from the from the obligation of the country. So, uh, as we already told you, the gambling is a very very dangerous thing, especially for the people who are in, in currently worse situation, right? The, because you have mechanisms like. Uh, more powerful, more rich people, people who own those casinos, people who control the uh, the gambling in the certain places, often take advantage to some extent of other people who go there to, to, to actually gamble. And, uh, it also applies to people who go there just for fun and then, then uh, get into, into the addiction, to people who are desperate enough to actually uh, risk more money than they would actually do if they uh, were in, 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 such, in, in such a need. They are likely to take a risk which are which it doesn't make sense from like a uh, probability point if they, if they really want to win, but they are in desperate enough situations that then happen. And in those situations, we, we believe that our country ha has the obligation to actually protect citizens from, from those kinds of activities, the same way it, uh, it forbids uh, most of drugs. And why is that? Because people are, especially people who are in one situation, are much easier to take the, uh, to being taken advantage of, the same way that they can be a victim of the country in the, if they are for example, in the weaker position when it comes to physical strength or, or, or something, or something like this. We believe that we should, that our country should uh, should protect us from being the, the victims of. This. Why is the, why do we believe that this is the case, uh, especially in gambling? Because if you are a person who is on the worst position, uh, regardless uh, on on, one, on which category, you probably don't have as much free choice uh, 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 which you can take, for, for example, in deciding how much you want to gamble. Do, what we want to do. We believe that, that this is precisely the reason why we why we make gambling illegal or very hard to actually to actually uh, to actually le le legal, legally do it. And we believe that the, in the situation when we actually allow that this to exist in those specific groups of Native Americans, even if we assume that Native American region as a whole maybe gains something from something from it, it still leaves the most vulnerable people of that group at the same risk that the most vulnerable uh, group, the poor people, the desperate people in other parts of the country are facing. We believe that even if the, if the casinos will be actually owned by Native American people, they will still be owned by the people who are higher in the economical hierarchy of this region and the, and the people who, are, uh, who have poor families uh, which, ha which, uh, which, are, which are starving and, and need to be fed. We, we, don't, we don't have direct uh, and uh, and uh, good uh, source of income in their lives are, are the ones who are more likely to be actually abused abused by the system. If, uh, not only it gives the nice uh, nice cheat code for the people outside of those tribes to actually do it to themselves and risk their money and risk their lives, etc., but also introduces the very easy possibility for those people who, are, who already, as opening opposition stated, uh, 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 who opening opposition stated already has. Uh, uh, had problem with other addictions because of their desperation of uh, poor, uh, uh, poor situations from the past. We believe that this will be just another, or is actually just another way for them to escape the real problems and 
be likely to actually be the victim. We believe that our uh, government shouldn't take this PUA out of just like uh, telling telling that, that we are giving them more freedom because we owe them something from the past, but we actually ignore the negative consequences, consequences that this freedom uh, does for the most vulnerable people of those native tribes. We, be we believe that because of this, uh, our country should still focus on protecting people who may fall into gambling addiction or just make very bad decisions there because of their desperation in their life, regardless of whether are the members of these tribes or not. This is the first. Secondly, uh, we believe that those regions will suffer specifically from uh, being stripped to some extent from their culture. culture. And before I explain you why this how this mechanism works, let me explain you why it's very important for those specific group of people to keep their culture intact because it's very important for them. Why is that? Because, because they are to some extent survivors of uh, trying to be stripped of their nationality from all the colonizers. The fact that they still exist, the fact that they still have freedom to actually uh, to actually have their culture, have their culture, uh, and uh, and be free about it is extremely important to, to, to those people. Now we are putting in now opposition is claiming that this mecha that this mechanism are uh, allowing those people to increase the, the, the financial economical situation. Problem is that it's happening in the cost of their culture, culture, and because they are on the financial disadvantage, we are basically putting them in the impossible choice, choice whether they uh, will uh, will actually open those casinos, but rely very much on the money coming from the outsiders who, who, are, who, are, who doesn't necessarily care about their culture, who ignore everything they achieved over the time, because it's, uh, it's often seen by those people as the easiest way, instead of actually improving the situation of, uh, of, their, of, their, group, uh, of their group, of their tribe, by actually doing in, uh, without so much reliance of, uh, of people outside from this, uh, from this, uh, 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 from this type. I see that this is the POI. Okay. Uh, so a simple question to like the opposition is that, do you feel that this motion is about banning gambling or banning specific forms of gambling? Are there any other forms of gambling existing in your society? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so basically, we, we believe that the same way in, as in other states, for example, doing gambling on the smaller scale is just as illegal as doing big casinos where, uh, without uh, permissions uh, 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 based on the certain rules from, from the government. We believe that the same would apply here, that uh, it would be treated uh, just the same way, and regardless of how big your operation is in those regions. So because we show you why it uh, has negative impact on those uh, for those regions, and also why it's breaking the, uh, the obligation of the country without opening the region. Thank you. We thank the uh, Deputy Prime Minister for that speech and now give the floor to the Deputy Leader of Opposition. Honorable Speaker, uh, the government side is being disingenuous in the motion that they're trying to run. Right? We would also like to debate the motion that this house believes that gambling is bad or this house would bad gambling in whole. But the problem is they've seemed to like run away with this big harm that, oh yes, like gambling is this really big problem that all of them have. But like doing this motion of like banning the specific like Native American like uh, or the gaming act is suddenly going to fix all of these issues. So that's a major problem there. So what is what am I going to discuss? I'm going to like go through all the rebuttals that I have and also bring in like the analysis for the case which we brought in, right? So the first major a, a rebuttal to that is the, the general idea that okay like gambling is bad right like we see that the problem in the case that government is trying to propose is that it's not it's just like a problem solution mismatch right like it's not that like banning these kind of like reservation casinos will suddenly stop like everyone from gambling just because of something right and the only link throughout two speeches that they provide to you when we ask this question is the simple thing that oh banning like native american reservation casinos means they're lesser casinos overall right this is problematic because that this still like as my partner explained there are certain states where there's still going to be like legal gambling situations right like last las vegas does not close down like atlantic city does not close down like the floating boat like i don't know like bingo lot place don't close down right and these are still existing harms on their side and they have to explain why like as, as a state you care about like removing the kind of benefits that we provide to these native american like uh, like landowners compared to like the general harm of gambling this is where the POA I asked you just a couple seconds ago is even more important, right? Because this doesn't completely remove like online gambling or gamblings on like horse races or dogs or anything else like that, right? This is an existing harm that in, in society because like online gambling is harder to understand the kind of losses that you have when you keep clicking when you don't have physical money like chips or something which you lose. 
and usually these are very optimized and somehow like uh, not transparent enough for you to like figure out where the problems are happening and many of these are usually not even in country they're all, all, all operated with some like external servers in malta or somewhere else that it's legal for you to have online gambling right so the problem is government doesn't solve any benefit of like doing this right they actually create more harms than they do and we'll also bring in specific re reasoning as to like why even this motion will like not be, even if we, if we don't ban this motion that there's still going to be like enough benefits that like overweigh the kind of harms that government tries to bring right firstly we brought about the idea of what this means for like native americans themselves right these lands are usually having some other like like requirement then it's fine right the problem is government can't even claim that these lands are arable and these people need to use it for like i don't know farming or like something else right? we have clearly mentioned and characterized to how these are how these are usually like the worst pieces of land that like in historical reasonings they were given to like native americans to like distance themselves away from like the other societies of like white people and how these lands are in general like the only place where they have to like uh, 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 thing agglomerate towards right this is where we try to clearly give you the benefit of what this means for Native Americans is by having this law in states which are usually like highly like religious or having like principles of not having to gamble, people still would have a need to gamble. It just simply means that these people now have the ability to go to like Native American casinos and like all the kind of like establishments we talked about. And in those cases, still we see this problem from government is they're not tackled our actual risk. Case, right? Our actual test case is not when do we consider the reservation Indians to become like gambling addicts, which we have not at all mentioned in our examples. We have actually shown how it doesn't need to be huge establishment that try to rival Las Vegas because you're something which is now firstly in a, in a closer proximity to these people. It right? doesn't need to be like grand establishments first. Secondly, it doesn't mean that the local population is now gambling. It just means the local population is involved in this kind of economy that it just created. Right? That means that they actually do work in the casinos they do work in all of these places and this is like a big economic like investment within the region right and as we mentioned usually these places are places which people only visit in kind of like tourism or like other states right when you have an actual establishment which may which may want people to come in then you actually have development which can happen even by their own things like building roads or like building facilities right and like casinos are usually places that you have to stay over or you have to like i don't know like crash for a couple of days that might bring about a lot of secondary and tertiary businesses into this ecosystem and this money even if it is not directly going to go like to the people because they might have investors in it or they have only a stock in it they still get money from either selling their land or from working in these places which is much more than they can ever get outside the society right because the problem is places which do exploit gambling within the united states exist at the cost of these people who can benefit from this right we give you the benefit that these people who are usually like having problems with education problems with like connectivity and are usually isolated in society now have an easy access to some kind of like stable job requirement and also this is not something which is going to cause like some temporary like setback where they can't do it right? we've told you how this is a unique source of income for most of these societies which they can't gain in any other way right we've also provided a stronger principle which is more in line with this motion which specifically is about how this is the kind of principle of reparations that the government owes to these kind of native american people because we don't see like any huge amount of bailout plan coming in the near future right this is a way for them to take the land that they've already been granted through other means to use it to have the greatest utility for them right because once you build a casino once you build these kind of things there is this kind of like unique source of income that cannot be like taken away by anyone else and this provides them like a much more means of benefit right? the next problem which we see this like fringe argument that comes from the government side is that suddenly there's this loss of culture or this loss of like like identity which native americans have and they've not clearly shown to you how this gambling or these institutions which are like degrading this right this has happened historically throughout many centuries about like people being like like belittled and like demotivated and prejudiced and we also see that when you have some money and some incentive to actually go and work in places that are closer to your society you can actually use that money to build schools or like to build local education tribes or like even keep up the local tribesmen which you have right people who don't need to go into these kind of things this is how we say that the money that you actually get into these economies actually help in preserving the culture and maybe the traditions that they have and don't go into like detriment to them right and yes they have like modernized and already have lost a little bit of culture but this means that they have the financial motivation to actually keep it and like also like preserve it for like future generations because they don't need to like only depend on like governmental like aid and like these kind of like state state level like uh, initiatives right we also bring you that the example um and a poi before that in case there is time from cd extension okay uh moving on then um a simple question is then what is government's case right government is not exactly debated as to why this move 
brings the kind of benefits they want. The principle they provide is shaky at best and like harmful at most. And thirdly, we clearly bring the unique benefits of this of this motion to the people in their claim as the most affected, which are the Native American children. Historically, the, the, the side of this, the, uh, historically I've been on the side of the worst because of like uh, colonial like, pressures. And this gives them the ability to gain the kind of like economic like, independence that they require and also preserve their like community at the same time. And for all these reasons, please vote OO. We thank the Deputy Leader of Opposition and now give the floor to the Member of Government to open the second half of the debate. So first let's talk, uh, let's focus on what OO has brought to us. We'll do some rebuttal and in this rebuttal I will incorporate one of the things that um, CG is bringing to, uh, bring to this debate. So the, the, the main problem that OO, that OO brings us is, oh this is a unique way, this is something that they are owed, this is a type of reparation. So what we're telling you is that yes you are giving them some benefits, you are giving them some money, but you will all, you're also giving them a certain type of narrative. You're giving them a, cer a certain type of per uh, perception that is not tied to Native Americans, to American Indians. They, they, this perception is tied to, oh, they're all casino owners, they're all voodoo tribe guys, because these casinos, if you look how they're made, they're made to represent stereotypically what people believe, oh, how Native American country is right. They have big feathers and a chief sitting somewhere. It is, uh, it is made so it represents it in a very stereotypical way that furthers the narrative of that this is how Native Americans are, that this is how be they behave. And it also ties them closely with the act of owning casinos. Now, o OG has already talked about why casinos are bad. Now, um, um, OG has already talked about why casinos are bad, but what's bad here is because because they have these harms to people that OG has talked about, and I won't repeat them anymore. Because the casinos have this uh, this type of negative impact on the people, these negative impacts are necessarily tied with the American Indians that are either owning uh, these casinos that are harming directly the population that attends them, or they're owning the land that hosts these casinos. So, in um, when you if you're giving them these reparations, why are you also giving them this negative narrative that necessarily follows them around and that necessarily hangs over their heads? You, um, uh, all claims that oh well, there is no political power to give uh, give out the reparations. This is not true. This may be true in the status quo because they are fairly, if they are fairly, frankly content with the situation that they're in, with the casinos that they're owning. But if this was if this were not so, there could be political power if the uh, if the Native Americans would try to act upon this and saying, well shit, now we don't have this. Give us something else. Give us some way to. Um, make yourself make yourself disenfranchised. You could uh, you if if they are so if they are. Um, so if they're so disenfranchised as, I don't know, African-Americans in America, you could give them positive discrimination. You could give them money to for start up businesses. You could give them um, cold hard cash, just as America has done in, the, in times of Corona with, with giving out actual money. You could give them other types of operations that aren't necessarily tied to exploiting the actual customers attending their business. There are other high impact uh, and, and, and high profit uh, um, branches of economy that do not necessarily require you to actually exploit the people that are attending your business and not have this negative um, negative connotation tied to the entire na narrative of native um, native americans and this is uh, the point that all calls out to og they're saying the way they don't show why gambling in these reservations are worse this is why they're worse because they inf uh, inflict this narrative upon them and we do agree that if they need help they should be granted help by the country that has historically abused them but it is not this is not the way that the, the that uh, help should be given um, and note that this is a, uh, this is explicitly mechanizing the points uh, that OG has described why this is bad. We're telling you why this is bad for the Native Americans, not why gambling as an idea is bad. Secondly, a point that, uh, that, that CG... Yes, go ahead. Note that gambling creates huge revenue streams that would not be likely to come from the government in any way. Thank you. Um, sorry to make you up short, but... Um, Yes, the, and this is a point that I'd also like to touch on. They do bring uh, large revenue streams, but you also have to note how they bring large revenue streams, by exploiting the actual customer, by giving them unfair chances, by giving them chances in a situation where they are actively being abused by the service that they are taking. So something being a huge influx of money does not necessarily justify it. Robbing somebody is a huge influx of money, but it doesn't mean that robbing somebody is justified. So. Um, furthermore, we'd like to talk about the free market. This is a topic that OG has somewhat tried to uh, try to address, but we're going to actually tell you why the free uh, 
why the free market is actually important. So um, when you have a situation where gambling is legal or it's illegal or whatever the regulations are, you should allow all people who want to be a, want to be a part of this market to have the same um, situation. So if uh, if um, O says, oh, so it's illegal everywhere. Well, well shit, if it in, in that state it's illegal, it will be illegal in these reservations. What happens? You have a group of people that are necessarily above the law, at least to some extent. I'm not saying it's impossible to close down uh, these types of casino, but it is much harder. This means that they can get away with many more things that they wouldn't uh, otherwise be able to be able to get out, get away with. So if they want to rig their machines to a higher limit of uh, a lower limit of winning than it's regulated by the state, they can do that. What are you going to do? You're going to find them, but you can't really take away their gaming license up to a much larger point than that would be in other casinos. They are, that is a certain group that is in many extents above the law that um, necessarily applies to everybody else. Um, and this is not uh, in line with the ideas and with the ideologies of a liberal uh, government, of a liberal capitalistic state, such as the United States. So, um, the, uh, and this type of, this type of situation when they're put in, when they're, where, where they have been put in, it's a situation where they can, let's also almost say cheat in these games. They will um, exploit the people who are most vulnerable. They will give you extra alcohol so you'll be, be more drunk so you'll uh, go and play some. They won't kick out high spenders even though they're obviously inebriated and they will kick out people who they suspect there's counting cards even though in some places, some places this may not be allowed because these people are theoretically above the law and this creates and even more furthers the narrative that we are, all, uh, that we are talk, uh, telling you about. So this is why this large revenue stream however large it may be does not justify uh, does not justify allowing this we should give them a reparations but we should give them reparations in different ways such as positive discrimination such as uh, 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 subventions for uh, business for startup businesses but not businesses that actively exploit uh, the people that are attending them and even exploit them in a much higher way than regular casinos do because they are much more immune to regulations and much more immune to the laws of the state because of this uh, the uh, the specific rules that have been put in place. So, um, the, uh, the, uh, this is the problem. And for, on just touching on the point of the online thing that O has thought about. Firstly, online the online gambling is not comparative. Secondly, uh, if they really want to open online gambling, I suppose they could. But if laws to online gambling apply to making an online gambling set, not playing it. But even if they do, it really does not matter that much because online gambling is not really in the scope of this debate and that uh, that point is more or less a watch so uh, for all these points that i have brought to you uh, we are proud to uh, proud to be cg we thank the um member of government for that speech and give the floor to the member of opposition to open their case okay so the government has an obligation before the Native Americans. And the obligation is to provide them with a lifestyle which is uh, effective enough to provide them with the economy at, at the same time to preserve their unique culture. Why? Because historically, as already proven by the opening opposition, the burden of the government before the Native Americans is significantly bigger than the burden before the other Americans because there is no other choice for the Native Americans uh, to live uh, in this community and preserve their culture. In our extension, we'll, we will prove you two points. First, why there are no other alternatives for this region to exist economically sustainably and at the same time to remain unique cultural heritage, which is announced by the opening opposition, but never proven. It is simply stated. Number two, we will show you to much more significant extent the harm from moving off the casinos from this region. Uh, because uh, on the opening opposition, these are only like street sweepers or casino uh, like uh, people, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So let's start uh, from a little of the rebuttal from the closing government. Closing government tells us that there is a negative narrative of like kind of donating the Native Americans with the casinos. Therefore, we should not do that. Well, first, this explanation is not significant enough to refuse such kind of a donation. Why? Because we already provide money to the vulnerable people, to the low-income families, to the single parents, to all the other kind of disenfranchised people whom we held responsible of. And the fact that it is, does not portray them in the best case scenario, which we argue, by the way, does not legitimize uh, leaving them alone without any of the protection. 
we believe that if they have no other choice than to have this uh, alternative, we are obliged to provide them with this alternative. Number two, the case of the exploitation of the culture by the closing government. First point, we have a regulation, massive regulation about prevention of the exploitation of the culture. It has to be dignified. If it is undignified, for example, if these are nude people who are wearing the helms of like the Native Americans, which is degrading for this culture, we have effective mechanism for prevention of that. And this is support by both the community initiatives, by both media, the court system, like this is very developmental. Number three, uh, like the statement that it is much more easy to hide from the law in these reservations. Well, you know, the fact that this is easy does not like mean that these people have to be limited in their rights. It means that it is for the government to impose additional resources to make sure that it can protect the law in these regions. If infrastructure in this region does not exist because of the government, this is the government's fault and it is up to the government to put additional efforts, maybe additional policing, maybe additional like, for example, internet monitoring, maybe like additional resources, maybe additional benefits for helping to figure out the crimes from this. So this is the burden for the government. Yes, please, sir. So what you're saying is that government should impose restrictions upon these uh, these uh, uh, places so they don't abuse the law. Exactly as, CG, uh, as the government bench is claiming. Thank you, sir. You say that if it is difficult to monitor a uh, situation in the region, you have to close the region. We tell you that if one policeman is not enough, you send three policemen. If one camera is not enough, you put five cameras. This is it, sir. So now, please, uh, uh, let's return to our extension. Uh, first point, we tell you that there are no other alternatives. Opening opposition simply states you that there are no other alternatives, but we will go through all these possible alternatives. Number one, alternative, the nation of the region. Like all the other economies subsidize this, uh, re uh, this region because uh, like this is moral responsibility, reparation, etc. Why it is unbearable? First, like there is no consent from all the other taxpayers for, uh, in America to do that. If we're speaking about gambling, this is a consent from the people who do gambling. This is their free will. In this case, there is no free will from these people. And we believe that they are not likely to accept this. Why? First, because they believe that this is not their fault. This is the fault of their predecessors, and they have already paid all of this reparation. Number two, they understand that this is not an emergency. They have to do it all the time. And like people do not want to pay reparations all the time, and their grandsons will pay their reparations, etc. Number four, we believe that this kind of like support of the region through the donations will lead to stigmatizations of these people. Like if you are a Native American, it means that you are so stupid and disenfranchised that other people are responsible for protect them. And this is like so wrong that we uh, never agree on this scenario. Um, at the same time, yeah, like, so this option is no good. Let's turn to the other options. Why economical development of this region is impossible? Opening opposition is limited to one statement. It is distant. But we tell you the, the other thing. First, it loses competition to the extreme extent. Why? Because historically, these regions were not developed. Why these regions were not developed? Because they have to be preserved. You cannot be in, like, uh, build the railway. You cannot build the transportation. You cannot remove the forest. You cannot do the agriculture just because you have to preserve the, the land. Therefore, there is no infrastructure for that, and there is no way for these people to compete with the other like regions. If you are the poorest region in the area, all the money from your region will go to the other regions, so therefore you cannot outstand the competition. Number two, simply we have to keep it as a reservation. Like, for example, our government can say, let's make it a tax free. We do not want another Silicon Valley in here because existence of the Silicon Valley in the region means like destroying of the culture of the like ethnic Americans in here. It will replace the culture. We do not want international hub here. Why? Because it will deteriorate the culture. We do not want development of the mines because the mines will remove the ancient forest. It will kill the people and move these people from these reservations like it already did in the whole America. We don't want the agriculture because it will remove the forest and did the same. We cannot have afford the services because as over in opposition stated, this is far, far away indeed. So while opening a position speaks about like the workplaces, we provide you another extension, which is significantly bigger, the tax pain. And uh, the thing is, one of the nuances of this, uh, of this 
like resolution is that all the money remain in the region. And you have to understand that these are not money from the local poor people. These are the money from the other people coming from all America to put their big, big money here. It's not about like you're spending $100. It's about spending a thousand and maybe millions of dollars in the casinos. So this money will go to the local community from it. It will go to school. It will cre uh, go to the support of the local business. It will go to the social payments. And if you remove that, you are not removing one working space in the casino. You are removing the schools. You are removing the social assistance and support for small business. Therefore, we beg you to oppose. Thank you. We thank the, um, the member of opposition and now give the floor to the government whip to conclude the case for side government. Okay, just a second. Okay, first let's deal with uh, the CEO's rebuttal on our case. Uh, when they talk to you about the narrative and how there are already laws where you can't discriminate Native Americans, where you can't walk naked with feathers on your head around the casino, like, yes, but that's not what we are saying. We are saying that when someone thinks of uh, Native Americans and uh, automatically thinks of casinos because they know they are privileged in this sense that they have more... Uh, they're more free to do uh, what they want in casinos and law is kind of letting them uh, go on that point. They are already like um, tying casinos to Native Americans. But the thing is, as OG already explained, gambling is bad and people know that gambling is bad. No one has a positive re reaction to gambling. They know that it's dangerous, that you can lose uh, a lot of things. And they usually see people who fold casinos as people who steal from uh, other poor people or like they see uh, the people who hold casinos as exploiters. So we think that it is very problematic when you put uh, a minority who is already oppressed in a narrative that they uh, hold casinos, that that's all they can do, and that's their main uh, ma main source of income, and the only thing they are uh, known to run and able to run is an exploitation business, is to steal from people who are addicted, is to steal from, uh, from other people. So uh, we believe that no, it's not like literally we uh, like make fun of Native Americans in those casinos. We are saying that the narrative that is in people's minds when you uh, enforce this sort of law is very negative to a minority who is already uh, oppressed. Uh, now when we are talking about how uh, Point. casinos uh, later, thank you, uh, can be more rigged than uh, others. Okay. They say that you can put a thousand policemen in a casino if that is necessary. Firstly, like, uh, the state doesn't have that sort of resources, like they can make more, uh, put cameras or, or uh, sort so those things, but the problem is not that there aren't enough policemen or there uh, aren't enough like people monitoring this. We are telling you that the law is on their side already. And it's a very sensitive issue if you, as a state, uh, tell Native Americans, okay, I am giving you this right uh, to casinos as reparations, then if you take away someone's gambling license, like there is going to be a lot of backlash if that is uh, the way that you are supposedly uh, making reparations for for uh, the, all those years and all of the, all those things that you have taken away from them. Then to like restrict them, like to take away the, that gambling license, is a bad thing. Um, so we believe that even if those casinos are rigged and people and Native Americans are like misusing their rights, we believe that the, the state really can't do much. But if they can, uh, but now let's talk about uh, the point that uh, they have no alternatives. They tell you that, yes, maybe they aren't going to be competitive in the business of like mining or whatever is necessary to like destroy the land. But in a place where you will build a building of a casino, you can build a building of a hotel. A building of, from like, it's the same thing. You know, you can do whatever uh, other kind of business you need to do. Um, and we believe that like, it, you, you are doing more harm. You are just making something that is respectable, that people don't associate with bad things, and you can still make it, uh, your income off of that. Um, and uh, as we tell you, like when uh, the state, when we propose this motion and when the, when the state takes away these gambling rights, then they will have some sort of a need and responsibility to kind of compensate for that in some other way and we already showed you that they, that they can um, like give them positive um, discrimination or maybe fund uh, more of their education maybe um, give them more um, more like uh, opportunities to uh, educate themselves to get a job or uh, other things like that uh, yes point who, who wanted the point 
note that Native Americans are very dependent on this income and therefore want to have a good reputation and sustainable business practices. Okay, but like once we take away that and we give them something else, we don't think that it's a it's a huge problem. Maybe if your point is that the transition is not is going to be rocky and not that easy, we think that, that that is fine as long as we are giving them something that isn't like such a bad narrative and that isn't uh, harming them in the eyes of the people. Um, while we are still giving them something that will give them material benefits, which is really the only benefit that there is. To, uh, to these laws, and we can we tell you that there are other ways to achieve this. Um, now, when we uh, are talking about uh, OO, and they are uh, they are saying that this is the exclusive source of income for these Native Americans, that these are the reparations. We tell you that firstly, again, there are other ways that the government can give them, and we believe that the government has an incentive to do that because once. Uh, they take away these like reparations. They will have to uh, compensate for that uh, uh, because like there is probably going to going to be a, a lot of backlash. People are going to talk about this. There is already a huge like human rights uh, movement going on uh, currently, and people actually do care uh, about minorities more and more. And we believe that there actually is going to be some kind of pressure for people to uh, give uh, give them that back. But also, we believe that it's not justified to even though that uh, Native Americans have suffered. Uh, in the past, it's not justified to give them reparations uh, in a form of like harming other people, in a form of giving them a chance to uh, harm other people and exploit other people. Because OJ, OJ already explained to you how uh, these people who gamble are poor, they are addicted, uh, and all like um, and all of the harms of gambling. We tell you that yes, Native Americans should get some sort of rep reparation, but not at the cost of. Um, other people who are already in a bad situation, who are already very uh, like um, <laughs> like sensitive, uh, and uh, who uh, yes, like they can be harmed. We think that it's not justified. We think that the state should make uh, a, find a different way to compensate uh, for the bad things they have done in the past, but also like uh, not at the cost of uh, someone else. Uh, and uh, so finally, uh, our extension like actually explains everything that OG tried to like they desperately want to protect gamblers we tell you how we're going to protect gamblers by stopping this like rigged system that a uh, native american can exploit uh, and make like their gambling more rigged and that's how we uh, like protect gamblers by uh, making like by enforcing laws uh, in a more, more just way we tell you how this is good for the native americans because of the clear narrative that we are giving them and we tell you that uh, because of the free market it is more justified uh, as a whole to not give someone more rights and more chances to be more competitive on the market uh, and so on thank you We thank the closing government for that, um, for those two speeches, and now give the floor to the um, opposition whip to conclude this debate as a whole. Uh, so basically, we have a motion in which opening government comes to us and tells us that the gambling strips the population of their money, and the opening opposition tries to explain how gambling is necessary for the local Americans to have their income. The problem of the opening tables is that they ignore the point that these reservations exist in that way for a reason. In order not only to provide them with money, but in order to provide them with the means of their life, in order to them to be able to obtain resources without the necessity of consulting with the government, which might choose their decisions as was brought to you by CEO when the taxpayer start, start to think that it is unnecessary for them to contribute into the economy of the local Native Americans. And on the other side, without the necessity of destroying the local nature, the local culture, uh, because basically when you destroy the nature, which is the basis of the culture of Native Americans, you are destroying their last safe place when they can preserve their culture, which is based on the nature itself. So basically, OO explains how bank gambling brings money to the region, but closing government bringing in 
on reparation and other other alternatives basically takes opening a position down because all those other alternatives doesn't have necessary all the harms that the gambling provides to the region they don't strip the pool from the money they don't create negative stigmas right they do not have uh, all other negative stuff which is basically reflected in the gambling but on the other hand by only this uh, it is possible that in this deadlock the cg is over all, all. What CO brings you, right, in there, in our line of extension, that the gambling within those regions is basically the long-term resource of income where people willingly bring those money to the region without the necessity to destroy the last safe haven of Native Americans. Right, because if you create a production in the area, you have to build plants, you have to cut down forests. If you want to create agriculture in the area, you have to take down forests and you have to create uh, fields. Right, if you want to create a sphere of services or, for example, some kind of stocks or financial markets, it might lead lots of people throughout the country into the Native Americans regions. Therefore, by assimilating with one another, it might destroy the last place on earth where their culture is basically being preserved. The gambling is the only way of business when a person willingly earns the money in another part of the country by production, by agriculture, by finance, brings it to the far away distant region without destroying all of its basic core features such as nature, such as culture, and gives this money to that re region willingly without the necessity to obey with the government and with all the other stuff. That is basically the most important case why all these reservations still continue to exist. Because if you would impose the, the rules of free competition in those areas, first of all, the people would try to uh, adapt to the new rules and destroy their own environment. Lots of people would, would leave those reservations in order to have a more successful life, for example, in New York or Washington, right, where agriculture is better, finance is better, or production is better, and therefore you would lose that reservation. Basically, by doing that, you would lose two things. First of all, it's basically unjust. Because in the, in, the, in the past, you have stripped those people away from their nation and from their state, right? And now by stripping them from their source of income, you are stripping them from their culture, which can only be preserved by those reservations. Second of all, you basically uh, destroy the means of them of sustaining their culture. Because in all the other cases, they are so unnumerous and their culture is so unpopular that while going out from the reservation, they are more likely to extinguish. Before I continue, I'd like to take you out from the opening comment. Okay. Uh, could you please explain me why is it better if those people work within these gambling places and can lose money on this gambling in the gambling places than taking away from this, uh, this harm away from them, not to lose money in these gambling places and earn it? Seconds, please, uh, too long. Uh, the, the, the point of the opening government, coming to the point of the government, is the addictive gambling, right? And we have two points of people, right? The majority of people who are gambling in the region are the gamblers from abroad. If we ban the gambling or make it just like in Las Vegas, people are more likely to go to Las Vegas where infrastructure is better and the region will lose. The native gamblers, right, we have to understand that even on their best turf, if we do concede to the point that some Native Americans lose some part of the money, the Native Americans in a region as a whole earn much more money on that through different means. The richest of them through the land ownership and through the ownership of casinos, the poorest of them through the social help, which comes through the region because it has a huge amount of taxes. And if for some reason they lose lots of money, they will have a great social services, which will come from the taxes, which have been obtained through the, this value in this region. Therefore, we have to understand that even in, on this matrix, this is the question of basic mathematics, right? If you have plus $1,000 and minus $100, it is better than then you have zero. Because on our case, you will have $900 in a hole and the social system will, which will help those people who would lose everything. 
Therefore, we have to understand that addictive gambling, even if we do concede that strips away some people in Native Americans, brings them much more. It brings them with schools, with roads, with basic education, because in order to do that, you have to have funds. And thirdly, about the stigmas, about their culture. Basically, the culture of those people being preserved in the reservation that is irrelevant towards the stigmas of outside countries. Why? Because those reservations are basically isolated and their main means is to stay isolated. And if New York, in Washington or in any other region, people think that it is bad that uh, they are earning money on uh, the exploits of other people, it is regardless because in the case when they have gambling, they are basically independent from the state authorities because people will bring money to them and they will be able to have their own local culture created within. Therefore, on the measure of saving the culture and leaving the people with the only meaningful source of income, which is possible, we are very proud to oppose the motion. Lovely. We thank the um, opposition with, um, for the speech and indeed all the speakers in the debate for the debate. Um, yeah. Okay, so thanks a lot everyone uh, for what was genuinely a very interesting and high quality debate. Um, the way we'll do this is I'll give you the ranking and then the justification and I think the best way to offer feedback is for me to weave it into the justification of the call so when we go from team to team I'll also point out a few things oh brilliant they're here I'll also point out a few things um, um, in um, sort of as, as feedback for both speakers um, so that we don't have to you know after the debate go back to all of the speakers especially because we might not find, find each other so thus the justification might be a bit longer um, it might be a bit longer initially, but then, um, you know, we'll sort of, it'll be more detailed because of that reason. Okay, brilliant. I'm, I'm very happy that uh, Open Government is here. Um, if you want, you can turn on your cameras, just but only if you want to. Um, and then, um, and you said your, your partner should be here uh, in a second, um, but that's all right. If you, if you want us to proceed without them, we'll go ahead. Okay, so in terms of the uh, initially, first of all, the call, um, so we, I give the uh, first to uh, opening opposition, the second to closing opposition, the third to opening government, and unfortunately the fourth to closing government. So that's first to OO, second to CO, uh, third to OG, and fourth to CG. Um, so the way that that played out in the debate and the justification for that is as follows. So sort of taking the debate chronologically, um, we, had an, we had an opening government which focused on one main um, aspect. Oh, brilliant. They're, they're here as well. Um, so they focus on one main aspect, namely that um, the existence of the you know, gambling um, sort of industry within Native American territories is a very, very potent source of uh, addiction and loss of income for many Native American uh, people. Now, before we get into that main argument, in terms of you know specific feedback as to the setup of the debate, I think opening government to you um, in the initial you know, stages of setting up the, your case, you say that the, the model by which you would be implementing this is to not you know, prohibit gambling actively, uh, rather just remove the special rights uh, that these territories have um, compared to other US states um, as regards gambling. Now, I think th this didn't become an, a substantial issue in the debate, but I would point out that that wasn't exactly the motion because the motion specifically said, um, let me check it again, but uh, the motion specifically said that um, this house would ban Native American ga gambling, right? And then obviously there, there's a question there as to what that means is it just, you know, the, the specifics of the Native American gambling industry, but at the same time, you know, a verb which is quite strong in terms of banning, right, presumably would, uh, you know, put a burden on you to, to ban it altogether. In any case, whatever, whichever of these two you choose, it would be ideal for it to be a bit clearer uh, from the get-go, what, what, what degree of ban are we talking about um, and how that would, would play out. So for example, would, would it be phased in, right? Would it be done suddenly and would ban all gambling in those areas and so on, right? I think, because uh, this is important because you, you're asked this clarification sort of numerous times throughout your speeches by other teams and then you're 
go-to response is, no, no, it'll be the same as in all other U.S. states. But obviously, there's problems there because there's variation between states. And, you know, Las Vegas has far laxer, right, uh, gambling laws and so on, right? So it's quite difficult for us to know what that means. And thus, it would require a clearer model as to how you're implementing that. And also, hopefully, a model which adheres to quite the strict ban which the motion probably entails. But in any case, that, that's more of a feedback point because it didn't become an large issue in the motion because I think both you guys and other teams sort of accepted throughout the debate um, that it is an outright ban or at least a majoritarian ban uh, on gambling activities in the area. So then, as I was saying, your, your main uh, sort of uh, case within, within the debate was one about um, um, how gambling is a particularly dangerous activity for those engaging in it and how that many of those engaging in gambling will be Native Americans and because of the nature of addiction and because of the, how it's very unlikely for you to win in casino games and so on, these people will suffer because they'll lose their income and their families will suffer because of no money to you know, meet their needs. I think you, you have that and then I think you also have a point about um, how the state has a duty to protect them. I don't think this point is very, very developed, right? There, there's a general sort of understanding of a protectionist state Right, but I don't think you do a lot, a lot more to, to you know, prove there is a principle here to protect. But given the principle is quite intuitive, right, about uh, sort of the paternalist interest in protecting, especially vulnerable populations like Native Americans, I think we accept it from the get-go. Um, just to say, I think there's other parts of your case. Uh, so, for example, trying to refer to how this impacts cultures, uh, but they aren't really insisted upon or developed. They only come towards the end of the second speaker, but we'll get into those as we compare you to OO, right? But again, your main case is about uh, sort of Native Americans gambling and losing money and losing sort of opportunities for their families. Bringing an opening opposition and, and the contrast here, I think opening opposition, um, so they, they, they do several things. The, the first thing they, they focus on is um, to say that even though some people, some part of the Native American community, right, is um, um, also gambles itself, the overwhelming activity in which the Native American communities engage in as regards gambling is rather running these casinos and sort of organizing these games and, you know, providing all of these services rather than gambling themselves, right? And then opening opposition sets up a, a very clear picture of how this is extraordinarily important money which is pouring into the Native American community because they can use these um, sort of casinos to, to fund themselves. It's also, they say, uh, opening opposition says it's easy money because the house always wins, right? So casinos are rigged to, you know, take money and bring it to the uh, Native American community. Um, and also that there's sort of connected services and industries to casinos, such as, you know, cleaners, waiters, marketing, but also restaurants, hotels, apart from casinos, from which, which bring a lot of money in the uh, Native American community. Um, I think what opening opposition is trying to prove here, and, you know, says in many instances, is this is a source of money which would suddenly disappear. And they also go even further uh, than that, and saying that the impact will be even greater upon losing this money because there is no credible alternative, a plausible alternative uh, to replace this industry. And they give some examples, indeed, as closing opposition points out later, right? Not a lot of examples, right? But they do say, uh, you can really do agriculture, the territories given to them weren't especially, you know, prolific in terms of the resources they had, they can do a lot, right? Um, uh, uh, and, and, and so any, this is the only form of reparation that is possible, uh, you know, opening opposition tells us. Now, in weighing these two cases, right, opening government and opening opposition, the problem is what character, the problem from the beginning is what characterization do we believe to be more sort of the, major, the majority of, so, so the activity in which the majority of people in the Native American community engage in? Is it playing? In these casinos and losing money, or is it organizing slash running these casinos and thus earning money, right? And I think that the problem with opening government's case is we don't really understand. There's no characterization as to how many of the Native Amer how many Native Americans or what proportion of the Native American community gambles in all of these casinos, right? Whilst opening opposition explicitly tells us that it's the overwhelming majority of Native American communities which take part in running these casinos and then gaining money uh, from, from, fr from them, right? So then I'm left wondering, okay, so there's the risk of some Native Americans playing uh, in these casinos and the risk of them losing some money versus the certainty of 
losing a lot of income, which is which is lost because of um, so many Native Americans running these facilities and these facilities suddenly disappearing because you're banning gambling, right? So initially, opening opposition has the edge anyway, right? Because it's a certainty of losing a lot of income and the industry's worth of income versus the risk of some people gambling within the community and maybe, again, another set of risks about them losing, right, uh, if they gamble. So already opening opposition has an edge on this. I would go even further, I think, opening opposition um, sort of more decisively settles this edge as in, as in it gets ahead of opening government um, when they also rebut opening government quite effectively by saying in the, sec in the deputy leader opposition that even if you would be banning um, sort of gambling, ran, uh, gambling which is run within the Native American communities, Native, um, vulnerable Native Americans would still be able to gamble in many other ways. They could go outside of the reservations and sort of, you know, gamble in whatever, Atlantic City, Las Vegas, which I'm not sure how plausible it is that, you know, these people will take these huge treks, right? But more importantly, I think that the better responses come later in saying they could still gamble online, they could still gamble on horses, on dogs, on whatever, right? And on areas which can be regulated, can be banned, and where the government you don't have reach because it's in the online environment and then from other countries, for example, right? And once they once opening opposition also points that out, then it does seem that the harms of opening government um, will happen on both sides of the house and are symmetrical, independent of the ability of Native American communities to run their own ability, uh, run their own casinos, versus the advantages of running your own casinos are only an exclusive to opening opposition side, i.e. the side where they exist and are not back. Um, so then, obviously, in, in this instance, opening opposition uh, takes it over uh, opening government on, on those points. Um, okay. Um, is there anything else here? Um, yeah, no. So, so that's the majority of what we hear from uh, oh, oh, sorry, and uh, just, to, just to cover this off as well, I think we, we do hear, as I was saying earlier, some other points from opening governments, but which are quite small and come quite late, especially regarding culture. And opening government says um, culture is very important uh, because, you know, um, for these communities, it's one of their only left safety nets and so on. And you tell us that it's likely that these cultures will be harmed because they are misperceived by um, the people coming in and gambling within these facilities, um, and they will generally be lost cultures, right, or, or they'll be harmed in some way. I would point out initially that opening government isn't really clear about how these cultures will be harmed, right? There's some big, you know, explanation about a misperception and, you know, uh, sort of demonizing these cultures instead of helping them, but we don't really understand how that happens. And at the same time, I think there is no engagement with, uh, from, from, there's no sort of um, focus of opening government on what these cultures are dependent on, right? And as a point of feedback, right, I think opening government could have done a lot more to say the problem is if a lot of Native Americans, right, are gambling away their money, right, um, um, then it's very unlikely that they can sustain those cultures because the, those cultures are dependent on having sort of people which aren't addicted to gambling, right, and are dedicated to sort of uh, communal traditions, right, and do have the money to invest in those communal traditions, right. So if you're trying to make the, the, the um, gambling, the, the, sorry, the culture point and how you lose it. Um, um, but but anyway, I would say even if that point would be quite strong, I think even with this, opening opposition rebuts that. So there's responses from the deputy leader of opposition saying, no, but actually in order to secure the preservation of culture, you would need a lot of money coming in institutionally from industries uh, such as the casino industry, money which could then be used to support schools, they say, preserving sort of cultural heritage and protecting the elders of the community, right, which preserve that, that culture. So there's rebuttal on that point anyway. So, so finally, as I was saying, opening opposition takes it over opening government. Now bringing in closing government to, to the fold here. I think, so I think that the, um, Closing government sets out with, uh, I think, two, two main extensions. Um, the first one of these is specifically about culture, but also more importantly about the perception of these people and the perception of these uh, Native American communities by the outer uh, world and through the lens of these casino industries, right? So what do these casino industries which they run, uh, how do they affect their, the, 
the perception other people have of them. And I think we, we do get a lot of detail in this extension, right, about how um, a lot of times people will tie, so external people will tie this community, this Native American community, to acts of gambling and will tie uh, them to sort of exploiting people who come in and taking away their money. And also there's some detail about how you know, these casinos use very specific aspects of the traditions of Native Americans, such as big feathers, um, you know, decorating the casino, or chiefs, right, or statues of chiefs. Now, I think that's, you know, the characterization of this is quite well done. The problem with this extension, which could have been very strong, I think, is that closing government never gets to the impacts of this, right? So never gets to the what the specific harms of these perceptions or misperceptions will be. Because you tell us a lot about how people will tie them to gambling, people will tie them to the notion of taking away money from, uh, from people, visitors, right, who come in to gamble, but we never understand, okay, so, so what, right? So we get that, and how does that harm the community, right? It's just a general harm of not being perceived as you would like to be, or are there more specific harms, right? Especially, you know, especially when there are a whole of the rest of the debate, like all the other free teams are pointing to very concrete harms. Opening government is saying they're losing money directly by gambling. Opening opposition is saying they're losing money and infrastructural funding by and not having the ability to protect their culture by not having their sort of, these industries closing opposition to doing something similar right in this instance it's very hard to weigh you guys up when you don't give us a specific impact of these um, perceptions or rather of these characterizations of the community by outsiders right i think there would in terms of feedback right i think there would have been a few quite easy way, ways to do of doing so right of pointing to specific policies or specific actions which people outside will take after getting this perception about native american communities so for example i think um you could have you could have said that this will translate into the perpetration of tropes about the people in the uh, native american community so for example uh, that they are trying to oh, so so for example that a, they themselves are gamblers, so they're, they're maybe lazy or they uh, waste money, right? People would be saying these things about them. Or on the other hand, as you guys were saying, people might think that they're taking away the money of, of sort of people who come in the, the community and thus there will be sort of perception of them stealing money uh, and so on. But importantly, even once you do those medium impacts, you necessarily have to translate them into sort of larger concrete impacts on these communities, right? such as you could have said well hate speech right is likely to to increase towards these communities right or or types of attacks against them because they're seen as not only other but also harmful to the wider white community right um even more so right you could uh, question what are the chances of political representation when your your community is systematically excluded and seen as harmful to other communities right are you likely for people to vote for an I know Native American candidate probably not right uh, is it likely that you will be accepted into sort of town halls and, and discussion forums probably not and so on right um, I think um, what was this there? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so in in any case, right? Such examples would be useful. Um, or I think what I wrote down is hate crime, whatever. Um, but but importantly, you need to have those, those long term impacts for the extension to be to be empowered. I think the other set of your uh, the other your other extension was also interesting because it it referred to how. The problem is you're not sort of allowing the free market to run its course because they have specific privileges in, in running these casinos. And I think the way you impact that is you said that they often rig their machines or, or sort of, I don't know, don't take away inebriated people away from machines and so on. Um, the problem is this is obviously um, quite susceptible to the responses which do come from opposition about how we can easily regulate them, right? But even without those responses from opposition, like I as a judge would um, initially see the problem with this argument, right? Namely that if, open, if government has the fiat to ban this industry completely, presumably they also they have a smaller fiat, at least a small fiat, right, to regulate away these specific small problems, right? So, so it does seem like something that can be solved even with your own fiat, even with less than your own fiat, right? So it, it doesn't seem like a problem which necessitates banning. Now, again, in terms of feedback, you could push this argument forward, but I think what you have to prove is that we cannot regulate them 
the, these activities because we cannot attain the level of granularity we need to regulate these very specific, minute sort of harmful rigged activities within these casinos without banning them, right? So, so essentially saying that only banning will do because there is no other way to do it on a low scale level. But then you have to give reasons for that, right? So what is it about these activities about which cannot be banned on a larger level? I think you try to do that when as a response to closing oppositions, bring more policemen, right? But you don't focus in on that as a, as a specific aspect of why you can't do it other than banning it, right? So now, how does this case play out in, in in comparison with other teams, right? So I think, first of all, in comparison with opening government, um, you're, so I think they, they initially, importantly, have very specific impacts, right? About how these people are losing money because they're gambling, that hurts their families, that hurts their communities and their culture. Um, whilst you guys don't really have a lot of impact there, right, on, on your extensions. But I would also add, I think, your, ex your first extension, which I think is very interesting about the perception of, of, of how these people, how these communities will perceive from the, be perceived from the outside, um, this extension has already been hinted at by opening government, right? So the DPM in their last point about culture does say something along these lines, not, not as much as you guys say in terms of characterization, but they do say uh, these communities will be misperceived, they'll be seen as only people who only gamble and so on. Again, they don't do much with it either in terms of impacts, right? But then when you guys come in and expand that characterization a bit, but also don't add any other impact to them, right? It's very easy for it to be seen as derivative given OG has said some, something even very, very small about it, and then you guys take it, expand it, but also never get to actual impacts, right? It, it's very unlikely that you went ahead of them, especially because OG had different and concrete impacts apart from that on, on other points about them. So that's the wing with OG. Um, I think the wing with OO similarly is quite, um, similarly is quite, quite clear in comparison to, of constructive material because OO clearly sort of points out how there are specific harms which would um, accrue from banning these industries because these industries are key to funding these communities um, and, and you know, creating jobs in these communities. Um, and then whilst you guys don't have specific impacts, what I would point out, I think you have a very good, um, it, what I would point out is that you guys have a very good um, response and very good rebuttal to um, opening opposition when you say, sure, but there are a lot of other means of providing reparations apart from casino building, right, or, or rights to hold casinos. If we would ban the special casino rights, then there would be more political interest in granting other types of reparations, right? And and this is and and just just to jump in on this point, this is something I would point out towards opening opposition that this is a point which they like you opening opposition should have seen coming. And more importantly, it's a point where you don't really dedicate time on expanding on the notion of lack of political capital, because in your in in the uh, leader opposition, opening up you opening opposition do say, um, ah, um, we can't do anything else, or can't give them other territories, or can't do anything else apart from giving them casino rights because there's no political capital for reparations, right? But that's the only sentence you say, right? And don't expand as to why that political capital is missing, why right? Why can Native Americans gain political representation and thus further their own interests? And then closing government, right, is able to say, no, we can do this in other ways, right? Here's, here's a few examples without you having rebutted them whatsoever before that. However, I do think that rebuttal is is not enough, right? Because it's just a provision of other alternatives. But if you're not explaining why the current alternatives is a problem, right? It seems like these other alternatives are well equally relevant, right? But not clear why they are better than the current alternative, given you've explained uh, you've not pointed to specific impacts, negative impacts of the current sort of way of addressing re re no, sorry reparations to these people. Okay, um, and, and now bringing in, so, so thus I think you fell, fall behind opening opposition as well. Bringing in closing opposition. So I think closing opposition aims to say, um, uh, well, so closing opposition focuses on an expanded version of the 
uh, opening opposition point about lack of other alternatives, right? So opening opposition had said, um, they can do other industries because they got lands which didn't have resources or agriculture. I think what closing opposition does then is to say, um, actually, it's not just that, it's that any other alternative um, would come with a direct trade-off with the culture of these communities, right? So, and then they give a series of examples. They list sort of mining, industries, uh, agriculture, um, and so on. All of these will come at a direct cost of these cultures and thus actually destroy these communities because of the necessity to destroy forests, destroy land, blah, blah, blah. Um, Lost casinos are, are good because of sort of being able to not do any of these but still gain money and people as you say willingly coming in and giving money uh, to these communities now in comparing you first of all to opening opposition i so there's a few things so first of all you in this in these explanations you rely on the court case of opening opposition, which was about what these casinos bring to these populations. And they're all of their sort of benefits, sorts of jobs, connected services, and so on, right, which which bring money to these communities, and how they then protect their culture by investing back into the culture, right. So a lot of it relies on that, right. Even more so, I think your substantive case ends up just being an expansion of the why there are no other alternatives, right? I do think you do that expansion quite well. Uh, I'll get into what I think you add to that even further, but I do think it's still just an expansion of one of their more minor points, but it's, and it's also an expansion which doesn't end up being uh, sort of crucial because essentially you're just adding to the list of things opening opening opposition has set up and adding other industries which are not feasible, right? Um, uh, so so you're not you're not expanding a lot. What I would say is, I think there was an opportunity to expand a lot more, which I think you saw, but didn't really focus on and didn't really take. Because at the end of the sort of, yeah, in the web speaker especially, but I think there's some mentions in the, in the member speech as well, but in the web speaker especially, there's some discussion about how there was also a major problem of, sort of if you don't have casinos, lots of people, you say there's a major problem of lots of Native Americans leaving these reservations to go to other cities, to New York, to whatever, to set up industries themselves, and for them to, for, for the cult, their culture to be extinguished in those other sort of places they move out to, because it cannot be sustained, it doesn't have whatever community values and so on. But this is small, sort of, th there isn't much time or, or sort of effort put into this, um, and it doesn't end up being a, a crucial separate distinct extension. Um, it's just another point to there were no other alternatives because we've gone for all of the possible industries right in the world and they wouldn't work. Um, uh, in terms of feedback, again, inertia, I think to beat opening opposition, this is a this could be a very good point, right? Because it would entail not only analyzing what would you what you would lose directly when once casinos disappear, so no more money going to these people, restaurants, jobs, blah, blah, which opening opposition did, but you're also exploring what is the likely demographic change in these communities. So what are these people likely to do once they don't have that money? So you take opening opposition starting point, there's less money, less jobs in the community, and then you would expand it by saying, and here's how all of the Native Americans will react. They'll leave their community, they'll go to more other affluent places, right? Uh, there, and, and, then, and then you say, what will happen there? Well, here's what they get in, you know, sort of, um, they get involved into very capitalist corporate structures, right, which take away their possibilities to focus on their culture, to fulfill their culture. They're very dissipated, so they can't aggregate and sort of protect their culture, right? Uh, you had the seeds of that argument, right, in your, in your speech, but I think um, that it was never developed, right, to an actual sort of big argument regarding that development. And obviously, that's a that's sort of a great development and a great extension because it talks about the long term as well. It's not just opening opposition, oh, we might lose some money and jobs. No, your imp end impact is the Native American community will disappear, right? In terms of cultures, it'll go extinct, right? Because it, it sort of dissipates and then lose culture. And so okay, so that's feedback and link you to, to opening opposition. I think the way, um, Okay, and now weighing you to the sort of the government bench, I think you do two things. So first of all, I think compared to the, <clears throat> uh, sort of comparing your constructive material, even your constructive material regarding alternatives, 
does a lot to prove that there is no credible sort of alternative to um, uh, casinos and you would lose all the things opening opposition mentioned, but you also focus a lot on how any other alternative would destroy culture, community, and the meaningfulness within the Native American community. But beyond that, I think the second thing you do in weighing you to the government bench is I think there's a lot of very good rebuttal um, which you make to both OG and to CG. So to OG, um, I think you're, yeah, you, so you explicitly engage with their um, some Native Americans gamble and lose money points by saying, sure, even if, so no, you say, um, this is untrue because the majority of people gambling in these casinos are coming from the outside, so they're foreigners, well, whatever, they're still Americans probably, but yeah, they're coming, they're coming from the outside. Um, and then you also say, and I think this is, again, a, a better weighing of this, uh, you say, and even if some Native Americans do gamble and lose money, that lost money is a far smaller sum and a far smaller proportion compared to the far larger earnings, right, that the entire community gains as an effect of these um, uh, casinos being run by them in the community, right? So that's that's OG, uh, folks uh, sort of rebutting OG and weighing with OG on that. And then also on CG, I think, again, we have very good responses to their argument about perception of these communities, because you say, okay, sure, there's a misperception and perception of these Native Americans as stealing money, um, but that doesn't really matter, you say, and that stigma is irrelevant because these communities and sort of Native American tribes and, and Native American reservations are quite isolated. So they quite rarely interact with external communities and they are not that dependent on the perception of external communities for their welfare. And as such, um, you don't really care, right? Even if misperception happens, that doesn't really affect them. It's far more important for them to be sustainable uh, within themselves. So I do think you beat both sort of OG and, and CG with those very specific and good uh, rebuttal points. Um, but don't beat a low on, on the comparison I've mentioned earlier. Okay, are there any questions regarding call or feedback or anything else any team would like to